just what is the brutal honest truth and the huge differences between the Costco Kirkland Signature Irons and of course the tailor-made P790s, the clubs that have caused such a stir in 2024. Hi everyone, my name is James Robinson, welcome back to this YouTube channel. Now I did a video the other day explaining the lawsuit that is now happening between tailor-made and Costco. Very random, I know, and it's a lawsuit which it's actually got more layers to it than what you would think because TaylorMade are basically suing Costco for false advertising surrounding the urethane insert that's in these clubs. We're going to discuss that today and see what the big differences are. And we're going to look inside these clubs and see just how similar or unsimilar they are when you do strip them back and look inside them. So we'll kick off with the eight irons and we're going to hit a couple of shots here and just see what the big differences are when it comes to the numbers for these clubs. Because if they do perform really similarly, then are tailor-made just kind of making a rod for their own back? In the comments in the video that I did the other day around the lawsuit for these clubs, it was very, very tailor-made negative. And I'm not trying to be tailor-made neg negative or Costco negative. I'm trying to be the guy that reviews these clubs, tells you exactly what they're like for the money. Obviously, the Kirklands are $499, and the P790s are quite a lot more than that, more than double that. But tailor-made have actually helped Costco with the advertising for these irons as well. However, a lot of people are now saying you can't find these on the Costco website anymore where they used to be. So have TaylorMade put a stop to the sale of these before the lawsuit, or can you just not get them like a lot of people thought you couldn't get them? So we've got the eight times, we've got half sets here. And I just want to have a really nice kind of hit of these and see what distances, what numbers, what spin rate, and what everything else you can anticipate here on the Golf Sun Launch Monitor. I've hit that really nicely. It's an eight iron. I would anticipate around a 150 carry, 154 carry, 7,200 spin, and a club head speed, no, a ball speed, sorry, of 116. So quite nice numbers there for an eight iron. I would anticipate much better than that with the Taylor Maids. The one thing I would anticipate that would be better with the Taylor Maids is potentially consistency on miss hits. That's for me what you're paying for and also the sound and the feel that you do get from these clubs. I must say Kirkland have done a good job with these. We've got the Elevate shafts in there which are similar to the standard shafts you get in the new Callaway irons. We have Lampkin grips on there and the heads are a forged head. Do they have urethane in the middle? I don't know. TaylorMade seem to think that they don't. That is why they're going after them. If you look down at these, I actually really really like the blade length of them, especially this eight iron that you can see. It's nice and long, it looks nice and forgiving, it's filling you with confidence, which I think is exactly what the people who are buying these irons would want. Let me show you the four iron later in this video, because that might give you a bit of a clue as to who's gonna buy these clubs. That was a little bit toe -y. I would anticipate spin to be down on that one. You can see a really, really, exactly the same ball flight realistically, a 157 carry. Spin was down nearly a thousand because I struck it out of the toe and the ball speed was the same. So I can sort of tell what shots I should be getting with these clubs. Let's hit another one then, let's go tailor-made. Oh, that one was toe as well. Interesting to see just how these are going a decent distance though, because that was one of the worst strikes I've put on eight in a long time. Still a 150 carry, ball speed dropped a lot, spin dropped a lot. Let's try and get one more nice one with the Kirkland. I feel like if you had spent $500 on these, you wouldn't be too disappointed. You wouldn't be too disheartened because let's face it, realistically, it's not a lot of money. Resale value, these were going for a lot of money on eBay. They were going for like $1,000 a set on eBay. Is that maybe what's irked TaylorMade into filing the lawsuit? Because we all know that TaylorMade clubs generally lose value when you come to get rid of them. And the Kirklands, are obviously picking up a bit of value. That is a carbon copy shot again. Exactly the same, you can see it's on exactly the same ball path, 150 carry, spin at 7,000. Right, let's now look at the TaylorMade. There's the TaylorMade. It's here. I thought I'd forgotten the club then and that would have really disheartened me. But if I just take a quick look at the numbers for these, so the first five numbers there are all Kirkland irons. You can see we have an average of 157 total, 153 carry, an average spin of 7,000. They're all pretty good numbers for me. They're all numbers which I'm really, really enjoying, to be honest. The consistency was there because I struck it so consistently. We now look at the 790. If you are spending a lot more money on these, would you hope for more distance? Would you hope for more forgiveness? Would you hope for more consistency? 
would you hope they feel better? Chris is helping me today behind the camera, and his first thought when I hit the first shot was that sounds really tinny. And was that tinny was the phrase you used, Chris? Clicky, right. Looking down at the 790, already sleeker, already a smaller design. And that is an identical toey shot. And that's gonna be, oh, 141. That was really toey. 6-2 spin. Let's go again. Amazing how, you know when you go up for a practice session and all you get is horrible strikes? 157 carry that time. And that starts to kind of show me maybe the opposite of what I've been thinking. Could you maybe get better consistency from the cheaper irons? That's the best shot we've hit. That felt really nice. Certainly a softer feel on the 790 when you do strike it as you want to. And that's the best shot I've hit. 153 to a 152 flag. 115 ball speed, spinning at around 7,100. Really nice numbers for a hollow bodied iron. The P790 was certainly the club that set the stall out when it came to hollow bodied irons, wasn't it? Then we saw the Cobra Forge Tech, then we saw the King i500, and we've seen quite a lot of irons since then come to the market. 790 again, same shot. The feel is so superior, I must say. But then performance-wise, look at that. That's gone a long way. That's gone 162, spinning at 65, huge ball speeds on that. And this is where, for me, sometimes hollow-bodied irons can you can become unstuck. The P790 became very, very synonymous with a club that looked fantastic and went a long way. That's why TaylorMade introduced the P770, a small-headed version of this, which was maybe a little bit more consistent for the better golfer. So, one more with this. We'll have a look at the numbers with the eights. Then we're gonna get the four irons out. So I don't know how far this is gonna go in there. It could be one five, one four nine on the nose. It's finished really, really nice towards that flag. Seven, seven spin. And I feel like in fairness, that was a pretty average strike as well. Let's take a look at the numbers to six to 10. And they're varying quite a lot more, aren't they, than the ones at the top five, which are the Kirkland, Spin rates as well varying quite a lot, but realistically there, I think they're a lot closer than what you might think. I think you would have to go and play a couple of rounds of golf with these. I found when I played golf with the Kirklands that the shorter irons, the pitching wedge, the nine iron, didn't really go as far as I wanted them to when it counted. The tailor-maids are kind of relying a little bit more. Let's look at four irons, because four irons are the club where actually, the whoops, <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. Oh, look at them. Four irons of the club where actually the technology does differ a little bit because you can see in the P790 we have that through slot speed pocket, which is designed to help you generate a little bit more ball speed when you do strike it low on the face. So that's potentially something that you are gonna get if you are spending a little bit more money. And if you look at the insides of these clubs now, the guys at Me, Go Me Golf Spy, the guys at My Golf Spy cut these irons open and showed us the difference. I'm a huge fan of the guys at my golf spy. I think they do a fantastic job really delving into the meat of the golf industry. And you can see they look kind of different. They don't really look that similar, do they? I think especially when you look at the club with the speed pocket in the bottom there, that goes all the way internal inside the head. And obviously the Kirklands don't have that. So if that, if, if this had a through slot speed pocket, six iron to four iron or seven iron to four iron, then you'd be like, yeah, that's a blatant copy. But I'm not too sure, I'm not too sure. Let's move this back and let's go. So 210 yards into this green. It's quite a narrow green as well, as you have seen. So I want to make sure that front to back dispersion is pretty much bang on. We'll kick things off with the P790 with the four irons. And this is where I'm a huge fan of the P790. I used the P790 UDI for quite a long time, actually, with a hazardous shaft in there. Will we see a Kirkland UDI? Not too sure now. I've absolutely ripped that. Look how easy that is to launch as well. I've turned it over a bit, but that should be on the nose when it comes to the number. 203, it's gone a little bit left, but that's me as you've seen throughout the day. Plenty of spin on there, plenty of ball speed on there. I don't mind that too much at all. I always think, how close would you expect to hit it from here? Identical. <laughs> Identical. So we know here that James needs to work on his David Ledbetter lesson. 211 carry. Oh, that's that's over there, isn't it, Chris? 4-4 four, four spin. 
Ball speed, good again. Can we hit one to the target though? Now that one I've not hit, and that one's not gonna get the distance. That's gonna be in the bunker, I would imagine, short, which is, that's a 190, and that's where you are gonna lose ball speed. I've lost 10 miles an hour worth of ball speed there with a miss hit. So that speed pocket's only helping so much. That was really low on the face as well. That's the one where I feel like the speed pocket potentially helps you because that's carried onto the green. Let's now look at, look at the numbers first, then we'll look at the Kirkland because realistically, if this lawsuit hadn't have happened, I don't know, is it putting a few of you guys off the Kirkland? Is it making you want the Kirkland more? We look at those four iron numbers there, 212 total carry, 212 total distance, 5,000 spin, loads of spin on there because the way I've struck the ball. Let's now, look at the Kirklands from the same distance. Interestingly, look at the difference in the top lines here. And you tell me which one you prefer because this one is the Costco, this one is the Taylor. I think the Costco's a little bit kind of sleeker, isn't it? Less offset maybe, which is really interesting to see. And I have obviously tested the Costco's quite a lot, but I haven't compared them against the P790. That looks really good, actually. Kirkland UDI, anyone? Oof. That was really toey. And that's, this is what I mean. And I'm almost glad I've hit that one. I haven't hit it on purpose. But that's a 167 carry with the four iron. And that's sort of what I wanted to show you from what I did with the review of these, because that wasn't as, it was a bad strike, but it wasn't that much worse than the strikes I was getting with the TaylorMade. Struck that really nicely. <sighs> Look at that, short though. And it's almost like the, the company that made these irons, potentially, is it a, a QC issue? Is it an issue where some of the iron heads, like maybe the eight iron heads, much better constructed than this four iron head? I, I remember the pitching wedge feeling quite dodgy in this set as well from Costco. That's the one we've been hitting with the 790, Chris, isn't it? I feel like I've really had to step on that as well, and it's still a tiny bit short. And people are saying, oh, the people in the comments, look at the size of me there on that video screen. People will be saying in the comments, oh, James, you hit them all left, you rubbish, this and that. This is proper testing. Like it or not, this is proper, proper human testing. Come on, let's hit one at that flag. That's as good as I've got for a four iron. And again, it felt firm, didn't feel potentially as good, but it's gone the distance when I strike it, 207, which was exactly the carrier we did have with the P790, good one. Club head speed a little bit lower, funnily enough, and spinning a little bit lower. Last shot of the test. That was the bottomy one, and it's lasered to the flag. Is it gonna get up there? It might go in this, it might go in. Oh. You see numbers there with the Costco Kirkland Signature Iron. Varied quite a lot from a 1.7 carry right up to a 2.07 carry and a 1.93 average carry, 2.03 average total. So quite a long way back from the TaylorMade and spinning a little bit less as well. Ball speed is the issue here, I think. Guys, let me know what do you think are the huge differences between the TaylorMade P790s and the Costco Kirkland Signature Irons. Very interesting there. I find the numbers pretty similar, to be honest. I think a lot of it depends on how I strike it and how I hit it. Obviously, if you hit it out of there, then it's not gonna go anywhere. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Smash that subscribe button if you have enjoyed this video. Let me know what your thoughts on the big lawsuit. And apart from that, I'll see you all at the same time tomorrow.